Anyone who says, be more confident in yourself, doesn't understand the first thing about confidence. You can't conjure confidence like it's a water tap. Confidence is always about something though, right? About our body, our career, our skills. It's rooted in something which can be measured materially. Confidence is as a consequence of action, not a precursor. And therefore there are subtle actions you can take which result in more confidence. Not because you're reaching nirvana through deep meditation, but because you've changed something in the environment or in your behavior. These are my tried and tested methods for reliably boosting confidence. The first thing is focusing on the message instead of the wording. Knowing what you're orientated towards over a long stretch of time makes it easier to navigate towards it. If you're focused on making each day perfect, you'll find yourself feeling like you're falling short. Let me give you an example. Once I had to do a presentation with two other colleagues in front of a large healthcare convention. Though we'd written what we planned to say, we each executed it differently. One colleague read everything off cards, which made him seem rigid and unsure. And afterwards, he admitted he didn't feel secure in himself. The second colleague memorized her speech. For a while, she was in flow state and had the room in the palm of her hand. But when she forgot a word, she forgot the next word, the next word, and so on. Suddenly, her confidence toppled like a line of dominoes. As for me, I made sure to understand the objectives of what I wanted to communicate. So by focusing on the message of each section, it helped me to stay on track. I wasn't so self-conscious and I could adapt if I forgot something. And afterwards, people told me they were so impressed by my onstage confidence. My second technique is taking care with your image. Now, I'm not talking about wearing designer clothes or relentlessly hitting the gym. It's about correcting minor imperfections that cumulatively elevate your image, making you feel more comfortable. I work in a hospital. Scrubs are not exactly the greatest looking thing, but they serve a practical purpose. Yet, there are ways to make my scrubs look good, as limited as the options might seem. First, I make sure my scrubs fit. Sometimes I see colleagues wearing sizes way too big for them. And second, I make sure that the materials or colors go well together. Sometimes I see colleagues pairing scrub tops with chinos or jeans. In my opinion, that just looks weird. The truth is, I've even overheard patients gossip about it. It's not a good sign when your patients don't take you seriously. I also go one step further by investing in premium scrubs. There's a brand called Figs that makes, in my opinion, the best looking, most comfortable, the best performance scrubs that you could ever possibly wear on a ward. Will I win any fashion shows? Probably not. But when I'm speaking to a patient, a superior, or doing a TV interview, I know that I look good, which boosts my confidence. I hope you're finding this video helpful so far. If you are, make sure you hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my content and events. Let's continue. The last thing I do is to understand that anxiety itself isn't a bad thing. As great as it is that our society has become more aware of mental health, I sometimes get the impression people treat negative emotions as something systematically wrong with their life. Anxiety is a natural response in our bodies. It stems from our fight or flight mechanism. It's our body's way of signaling caution, similar to a car's reverse sensor alerting you to an obstacle. It's not our bodies telling us we are useless or stupid or bad. Understanding this helped me recognize these moments as opportunities for growth. Challenges and stress are important if we want to make those incremental progressions in life. Of course, ensure that the situation you are in does not vastly outcompete your skill set, but it's important to understand that you need to cross new stress thresholds. That way, you'll no longer feel anxious when you're in that type of situation. Then you'll have elevated your confidence without even realizing it. And all it took was focusing on your message, calibrating your appearance, and testing your limits. If you've made it this far, I know you're taking your personal growth seriously. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with me. One thing that plays into your confidence is your self-esteem and self-belief. This was something I struggled with. So I made this video on screen here on how to boost your self-esteem without relying on anyone else for validation or approval. I'll see you there.